Hey guys, it's Michael Babcock. It's been uh, two or three days since I recorded a video-ish. Let's see, what are we calling this video? We're calling it... My Opinions of Accessibility on the Chromebook. So, I've got a couple of things here. Those of you who can see, can, can probably, let me adjust this a little bit, can probably see what i got sitting right here to the right of me. Yeah, that's how small it is. Here, let me close it up. That's how small it is. Got me this new Samsung Chromebook. It's, those of you who have the Galaxy Nexus, it's about that thick. Ah, I got a good reference. Let's see. In comparison to the NLS book player, this Chromebook is, I can, it's, it's literally the top of the Chromebook screen itself uh, is exact even with the handle of the NLS book player. So if you have the NLS book player sitting on its uh, like four rubber pieces, the top of the Chromebook is exactly even with it. Like I could set a cartridge on the Chromebook, slide it forward into the NLS book player, and not have to lift it up, push it down, anything. It's, it's exact even. Uh, if that makes any sense. Um, those of you who don't have an NLS book player, it's about, I would say, one and a half thickness of my Galaxy Nexus. Um, the thickest part is the hinge on the back of it. It's a pretty light little thing. Like, Mallory hands it to me. I'm like, that's that's the Chromebook? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, huh, that's, that's kind of small. So what we're going to do today is I want to show you guys, first of all, I want to give you my opinions of the Chromebook real quick. Tell you who I think the Chromebook is for, and of course your opinion might vary from mine. And then, uh, why not? I'll show you guys a little bit of the Chromebook as well. A little bit of Chromebox in action, we'll go from there. This video should be probably no more than 10 minutes long. If it is, I do apologize. But, what is Chromebook? Some of you may have heard of Chromebook, some of you may not have. This one is a Samsung model, it's got uh, 16 gigabytes built in. So that means I can store 16 gigabytes worth of pictures, video, audio, and applications that can run offline on the Chromebook itself. And that's without using any of the three USB ports that are included in the back. Uh, there's also an, also an HDMI port in the back, and it looks like an SD card slot in the left-hand side. There's not an optical drive or, or anything like that. Actually, there's not even a power button. Like... It's weird. There's there's a, there's no power button. <laughs> so, what is Chrome OS? Chrome OS is a web-based operating system. Now, with all of these um, cloud services such as Dropbox, uh, Microsoft Office 2013 is going cloud. Uh, Google Docs is in the cloud. Google Sheets, Google PowerPoint, well, Google Presentations or whatever it's called. Google Slides is what it's called. Google Slides, and then, of course, you got Google Drive. But all of those are in the cloud, which means you can walk up to any device or use an iOS or Android device or now, hopefully, Google Chrome device and uh, uh, be able to access those documents, multimedia files, or other things. Now, a lot of things are using HTML5 to be able to create web applications. Farmville, for example. Uh, that, that's one that a lot of people know, like a lot of people have heard of. It's a really popular game by Zynga. And Zynga got really pop, or really famous because of their, their abilities of being able to create applications such as Farmville, and they have some other ones out there as well. But... What what you can do with the Chrome OS is you can open it up. It doesn't have to load an entire operating system like your Windows or Macintosh computer does. And it starts right up, literally. So what I'm going to do real quick is while I'm talking to you, I'm going to go ahead and shut this Chrome OS down. Um, and while I'm shutting that down, I'll, I'll explain to you why and what, I'm, what we're going to show you. So uh, the Chrome OS comes with a built-in screen reader called Chromebox. Those of you who are familiar with VoiceOver know that VoiceOver comes uh, with the Macintosh operating system and with iOS operating systems as well. And it's a built-in screen reader. It's uh, okay. There's also TalkBack on Android. I mean, VoiceOver is superb, sorry. TalkBack is eh, okay. 
I mean, you can do stuff with it, but Chrome Vox is, in my opinion, the new technology of tomorrow. Now, especially for blind or visually impaired individuals. I've included a couple of links for you guys in the show description. And I'll explain to you what they are real quick, and then what I'm going to do is this Chromebox or this Chromebook shut down. So I'll, after I'm done explaining to this, I'll tell you when I open the Chromebook to turn it on. Because as I said, there's not a power button. But once you open it, it automatically turns on. And you can see how long it takes to get to the password prompt. Uh, I won't pause. I'll, I'll do it live so that you guys can see that. So keep tuned in. But I've included for you a Chromebook keystroke reference sheet. Now, if you're blind, of course, it's good for you to have this. If not, take a look at it if you're interested in the Chromebook. Why? Because if, if you can just, I mean, you're typing in a search and you want to be able to bring up the status bar, Alt-Shift-S will bring up, or not status bar, but status area, Alt-Shift-S will bring up the status area. So you don't even have to click down there. Uh, I think it's in the bottom left, if I remember right. But you can just make a quick gesture with your hand, Alt-Shift-S, and all of a sudden your status icons are up. So these keystrokes work even without Chromevox enabled. You don't have to have Chromevox enabled to use these the keystrokes that I reference in the show description. If you can't see the links in the show description, a copy of the show description with links to the links <laughs> that's got a unique ring about it. Links to the links will be posted on empoweringtheblind.com E M P O W E R I N G T H E B L I N D dot com. Second reference I post to is the ChromeVox homepage. So that way those who are blind or visually impaired or interested in ChromeVox can, or a Chromebook, or, or using ChromeVox on their Windows or Mac computer, because you can do that as well, but using ChromeVox, but can go and get information about it. Then the third one is what I'm going to show you guys today, and that is the ChromeVox Getting Started tutorial. Now, when you first open your Chromebook, you're going to get presented with this by right after you launch Chromevox, um, you're going to go through the setup guide, and then you'll get presented with this guide. Um, in my opinion, if you launch Chromevox on the language screen when you first open your, Chromevo your Chromebook, you should get presented with this guide so that way you know how to use it, because I had to look it up, and, well, eh, Mallory kind of set it up, so that, that was an issue with this at first, but, because I didn't have access to that screen, but I did a format on it, which took a matter of seconds and was accessible, and was able to get everything running, up and running from the Chromevox tutorial as well. But I'll show you how to get to it if for some reason that happens in your situation, or you buy a used Chromebook, or, or something like that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's about all I got for you guys today. Let me go ahead and open up this Chromebook. I'm going to open it right now. And then when you hear it start talking is when it started up. It's open now. We're just waiting for it to start up. It's you. And that's how long it took for it to start up. So, uh, that's Mallory's account. Let me hit tab to go over to my account. I'm going to log in. All right, looks like we are signed in. Um, it does, normally I don't actually... Yep, we're signed in. So usually I don't automat like shut down the Chromebook itself. I usually just close the lid, and that puts it in a standby, and it starts up a little bit faster. But really, that's, from it, in a shutdown status, that's, that's not bad. Um, so let me go ahead and close this window. Okay, so we're on the Empowering the Blind homepage, which is one of my home pages. I need to go in and close those up because for some reason it's opening two tabs or three tabs instead of just one. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Chromevox website. Let me slow this down a little bit. I'm using tab to go through the links. And how you can get here is by hitting Control-L, 
which will take you to the location bar and then type in Chromevox, C-H-R-O-M-E-V-O-X dot com. And it'll take you to this page and you want to hit tab. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys that. Until you hear it say Chromevox Interactive Tutorial. Now, those of you who are curious how you turn Chromevox on in the first place, control alt z uh in on this chromebook it's it's kind of weird because there's only two keys in the bottom left corner and <laughs> it's control alt so let's go ahead and click on this link click, click with chromebox interactive tutorial chromebox enables you to use your keyboard to explore the web with the help of synthesized keys you can stop chromebox from stopping at any time by pressing the control key let's start off with the basic keyboard shortcuts required to read this guide when pressed at the same time the shift and search keys are known as the chromebox keys if you already know where these keys are located you can press chromebox plus down arrow now to move to the next paragraph if you would like more information on the location of these keys press the space bar so as you can see, it does a very good job uh, explaining this. Now, it says press the space bar. One interesting thing to, to uh, know, and this is a good explanation or a good demonstration of the Chromebox technology in use, is if you visit this page from Windows, I think, if I remember right, it only read that first paragraph, but when you press space bar, it didn't read this information. So it, it takes you into like a, a secondary context menu. I'm going to press the control key and see what it says. See, it says please try again. And, and I know where the shift key is because obviously I use the Chromebox keys. But uh, that's how you get to the Chrome tutorial. Um, yeah, let me go and go back to empowering the blind. And as you can see, I'm back at Empowering the Blind. So, it's a pretty cool little operating system. I mean, if you're looking for something different, and you're looking for something that'll, that'll do what you need to do quickly, check out a, a Chromebook. It's, it's there. Technology is there. You've seen proof of it. I, I showed you how to get to the tutorial. So, hope you enjoyed it. And if you found this video to be useful, go ahead and find an offer at one.myownpay.com.